Hey, I'm Chris Zepp from Make Everything, and today I'm making myself a third hand. Check it out. So I'm gonna be starting off this project with an old rusty industrial chain that I got from a metal sculptor shop who had passed away. He had a whole bunch of really random metal bits and pieces and I grabbed this chain because I thought I'd figure out some way to use it. First step is gonna be shortening the chain which is actually relatively easy with this because the pins have these little clevises in them. It actually works out a lot better than having to try to use like an industrial chain breaker or potentially having to cut one of the pins because I can essentially adjust the length of the chain as I need it. Now I'm putting it in this bucket which is filled with WD-40 brand specialist rust remover soak. There's about three gallons in there and once I put the stuff in I realize that I need a little bit more so I add another gallon. I really like using this product. It's skin safe and it does an amazing job uh, removing rust and basically dissolving it off of metal parts after just a couple of days of soaking with very little effort after the fact. So after I pull the parts out, you can see those really heavily rusted parts look basically like bare metal again. Um, I have to go ahead and try to get as much of the actual solution off of the metal part. So I wipe it off with a paper towel and I use a little bit of wire brush to get anything that might be sort of residually on there. But you can see the difference between the original part and after it's been soaking in the rust removing soak right there. And this would be so much harder to do if I had to go ahead and do this with a wire wheel. So I'm very happy to have something like that. I'm also going to be using the original WD-40 formula with easy reach. Just spraying this down is going to help break up any residual grime or water that might be left on any of the parts. So I spray those down and clean them off with a little bit of paper towel and then I can bring them back in the shop and start actually fabricating the third hand that I'm working on. Now the idea of this project is to make something that I can keep parts from moving around on my anvil. So basically what I'm going to have here is an industrial chain hooked up to a heavy weight and it's going to go over a piece of metal on my anvil so that when I'm striking it, it won't move. Now here I've got my Hosfeld bender. This is essentially called a universal bender. And I'm going to be bending some clevises over and bending a couple of hooks so that I can hook up to the chain and eventually hook up to the top of the piece of steel that I'm going to use as the weight. Now that first bent was kind of like a test bend. And then I go ahead and start bending some more shapes using the tooling on here. Now I've never bent round bar with this before, so it's a little bit of a learning curve and I actually have the Hosfeld manual off to my right. You can sort of see it in the background and I'm using that as a guide to kind of understand what I'm doing. I bend a couple of test pieces and then I can go ahead and start bending the you know letter A or kind of triangular shape that I'm thinking about. Basically what I want here is something that I can hook up a metal carabiner to that'll definitely hold the chain really securely but allow me to get on and off of it re relatively easily. I bend the two edges and then I can sort of start crowning over the middle. Then I'm going to use a hammer over on the anvil to start bending stuff over and try to make this thing closer to the final shape. Now this is tricky because I have to cut it and then fit it around the chain. So I have to be careful with how much I bend it to the final shape before I actually try to install it. It's a little bit tricky to get this to fit. I wind up using a combination of my post vise and a hammer, sort of bending and twisting as I go, trying to get it to fit smoothly inside the end of the chain so that I can actually have it pivot when I'm done without binding up too bad. You can see the metal carabiner that I got sitting off to the side on the anvil as well. So I give it a couple more taps with the hammer and make sure that it's all going to kind of move around and work together. And then I can go ahead and start on the other side, which is going to need essentially the same exact thing. You can get an idea here of how this is going to work on the anvil. So back over to the bender, I start bending the other hook. And this one I use a little bit different of a method. I bend it a little bit less, and then I go ahead and I start kind of forcing it over with the hammer again. A little this old Tony hack to uh, cut that piece of metal there too. Since I hadn't bent this over as much, I use some kind of lighter taps with the hammer to sort of try to guide this thing into place. And then I finesse it over with the help of the vise and also using the hammer. Again, I want this to still be able to move a little bit, and it's hard to do because this is pretty thick material. It's 3 8 round bar, so it's got a lot of resistance when it comes to uh, actually trying to bend it back to where you want it to go. After a little bit of messing around, but that's all done. Next, I'm going to take this old elevator weight that I got from an old job and cut it off on the bandsaw. It's got sort of a keyway on the end of it, and I want to get rid of that. 
So I go ahead just and lubricate it up with some three in one oil and give it a cut. This also sat in the rust removing soak, but it's starting to flash rust a little bit because I didn't do anything to kind of coat it after the fact. I also left it on the floor, which is pretty wet. So I grind the end a little bit and then I take one of those test bends that I made and I weld it up to the top of it. The goal here is to make sure that that's nice and centered so the weight hangs very, very square because I don't want it to hang on an angle or dangle or kind of move around. So I take that 3 8 rod and I give it a tack weld, check and hang it, and then I can go ahead and fully weld the rest. I'm burning in a good amount of heat to this because I want to penetrate into that inch and a quarter thick solid steel. Next thing I have to do is make a bracket to actually hook this to my anvil. Now that's a 400 pound Fisher anvil on a very nice and very rare cast iron base. So the last thing I want to do is weld or drill any holes in it. So for this, I'm going to make a bracket using the same 3 8 bar and using this piece of quarter inch bar that I got off of an old job. This had some paint on it, so I ground it off and I start bending up this bar with about a three inch offset. Now the idea here is that I'm going to cut this on an angle using my bandsaw and then weld it on so that the carabiner can slide left and right. If I were to put this chain in a fixed point on the back of the anvil, I wouldn't be able to use pieces on the left and right side of the anvil. So I figured by having this sort of sliding rack, the whole assembly will be able to move back and forth and I think it's going to make it more versatile. It'll make a little more sense when you actually see it on the anvil stand. And by kind of freehand cutting that angle, it's going to offset it vertically because again, I don't want to drill holes or weld to the anvil stand. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use some four inch C clamps to make sure that this thing can't go anywhere. In order to get them out of the way, I actually do the clamping from the inside. So I have to reach underneath the anvil stand itself and just make these nice and tight. Now I make these super tight and I think it's going to be enough to keep this thing from moving. But if it ever does, I can always add another clamp or I can try to get underneath it and really tighten them up. You can see very quickly I'm able to hook that on and I'm also able to remove this from the anvil really quickly if I want to. Now I can hang the actual counterweight on there and you can see the chain is just a tiny bit too long. That's no problem though, especially considering this chain has those easy to remove pins. I say easy to remove because I don't have to grind them, but they were actually a huge pain to get out. I pull the little cotter pins out and then I can try to remove the pins. I guess I had forgotten how hard there was to get the original one out. So I have to go over to the anvil again and really bang these pins out with a pin set. These things had a really tight friction fit in there even after you got the cotter pin out. So it took a little bit of effort to get those out, but it allowed me to shorten the chain and it allowed me to make the chain longer if I ever want to use it on a different anvil or in a different application. I think overall this was the best choice because the chain itself is super heavy and the counterweight's really heavy too. So this is going to definitely do a good job in holding my workpiece in place. I can put the pin back in, add the cotter pin, and this thing is pretty much ready to test. I have to make sure though that the sides of the chain are nice and lined up. Everything's all held together. Nothing's gonna get in the way. And you can see how it stretches over the top of the anvil. I hook up the counterweight and this is ready to go. I've got a piece of one inch square bar there and I'm gonna kind of test it out. Now it's probably a little bit hard to see in the video while I'm just pulling on it, but there's a fair bit of resistance on that one inch bar. And what's nice about this is that I can also put the bar on an angle, gets a little bit more surface area, and you can see the way the chain falls when I pull the piece out. A couple strikes with the hammer, you can see the difference between having the chain on there and not. And then I can give it a try on a piece of hot work. Now this first little test, I think I mushed my piece of metal into the hardy hole, which kind of cheated, but you can already see how it has resistance to move too far when I'm striking it with the hammer. Now it is moving a little bit, and if I use a handled punch, it barely moves at all. But I think this is really going to be useful for using like a top tool. Like in this case, that's a flatter. Now I'm hitting that thing pretty hard and the piece is barely moving. If I were to try to do that without that chain holding it down, it would go flying across my shop. So this allows me to work with one person without having to use tongs. If I can just get the piece under the chain, it'll make a big difference. And I'm going to do a quick example here with nothing. And I'm not even hitting the flatter that hard. You can see that piece just immediately wants to go rock and fall off the anvil. And that could be super dangerous. It could burn my foot or, you know, catch something on fire. Now, once I put the chain over it, you can see I'm able to slide the chain over and I can basically hit this as hard as I want. And that piece of metal is barely going to move at all. It's going to slide a little bit, but I can quickly reset it just by tapping the other end. And this thing is accomplishing exactly what I want. 
The only other thing I have to do is figure out how where I'm going to put the counterweight when I'm not using it because it doesn't really like to sit anywhere. Last step, I'm basically going to spray this with some WD-40 Specialist Corrosion Inhibitor. This is just going to keep it from rusting. You can also use their regular WD-40 Original solution for this, but I like this specialized product. It's definitely going to help keep the rust off of it because I don't plan on painting it. That'll affect the action, and this thing worked out great. Overall, it's a super heavy-duty addition to a pretty gigantic anvil, but because of that clip, I think I could use it on a couple other tools in my shop. All right, that about does it for this video. As you can see, basically one hit with the flatter and a hammer, that piece goes flying. Um, so very dangerous condition I want to avoid, and it could easily land on my foot or on an electrical cord. It caught a piece of slag on fire. So having that piece of metal secured using the chain is really helpful, and it's going to help me work alone here. Um, trying to hold that piece of metal with a pair of tongs, the way that I have it running parallel to the edge of the anvil is really hard to do because, you know, sometimes you can take your tongs and you can put them in between your legs to hold a piece of material, but that's not really going to work in the way that I was doing it. So the heavy chain and the weight, it does it all for me. Now my setup with the bar so that the weight and the chain can move back and forth is going to be super useful because now I can get over my Pritchell hole or over my Hardy hole. And overall, I'm really happy with how it came out. The other detail of not actually drilling or welding to the base was really important to me too, because this is a factory cast iron base that was fit for this anvil. And I didn't want to like kind of bastardize it in any way. Huge shout out to WD-40 brand for sponsoring this video. The WD-40 specialist rust remover soak was super helpful and it would have taken me forever to wire wheel all that rust off of the chain had I had to do it manually. So drop it in there for a couple days, pull it out, clean it off with paper towel and it's ready to go. And I also coated it with the WD-40 specialist long-term corrosion inhibitor, which is gonna help me let it live in the shop without it getting rusted from just sort of humidity and whatever. It's gonna help with the longevity of this tool and I'm gonna leave it raw and it's gonna last for a really long time. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave it a comment down below if you have any tips or questions. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more videos like this, more videos in the shop making stuff and follow me right here at Make Everything Shop on Instagram and Facebook if you wanna see what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Got a lot of cool projects coming up. I'm always sharing cool stuff going on here in the shop on a day-to-day -day basis. So thanks again for watching. Again, I'm Chris Zeff from Make Everything, and I'll see you on the next video.